Welcome to Ennis. Everybody's very, very welcome. Uh, I've been waiting for this for a good while to show you my, my town. This is where I was born and reared. Um, Ennis County Clare. Just behind you there is the famous Daniel O'Connell monument where he was known as the Great Liberator. He was an MP for Clare, did a lot for Clare. was born in 1775, I think, and died in 1847, around about that time. Shoe problem again. Always the same scenario. They're burst here, they're burst at the bottom, they're burst at the side, there's no one heel on one, no heel on the other. So this is the man, John Murphy, that normally sorts this out. So uh, he's a very, very important man. I hope he's in. Let's go. Home again first. Home again, yeah, home again, absolutely. Okay. After a long tour, John, but uh we're home for a couple of weeks. Same problem. Um you know, they're, they're torn here, you've, you've done them probably six no or seven problem. times now, there's a hole here. Um, no. The last time this it's held up perfect. Grand, without, without having to put a bend on it. Without having to put a bend, So we just no go problem. with stitching along here. Stitching again, and, and this is and this gone me as well. Um, and here, and there. the normal, normal things. Right, general overhaul. Absolutely. Exactly. So, you're busy out, yeah? Kept going all the Flying time now. As busy as ever, thanks for the God. That's for sure. So, how long have you home? I'm home for, um, what is it, six weeks altogether? All right. Well, so, this is not a problem. I have a, I have a, a new pair so that I... keep you going. Okay. As you know, these are the ones I use for rehearsals all the time, and I, they're like a glove to me. Okay. So, uh, problem John is Murphy, um, the oldest swinger, in, not the oldest swinger in town, but uh, the best the best that I know of. I, I've been all over the world with, with these shoes and, and trying to get them repaired properly, and the only man that can do it. In the business since 1956, John is. Um, of repairing shoes and making shoes and doing everything with shoes. So, uh, and it's great to know you've travelled Europe and that you still have to come back to me. It's absolutely, a great, it's a great yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great I compliment to, to what you. we do here. For it sure, is. it is, for sure. Um, so, thanks a million, John. No bother, Michael. We'll you're welcome anytime, again. anytime. Thanks a million. You're very welcome. All right. Good luck to you. <laughs> Now, the plan is we're going to go and see my old dancing teacher. She's going to kill me if I say old dancing teacher because she's not that old and she doesn't like that. But anyway, we're here and she's inside and she doesn't know we're here. Genuinely, she's no idea. So let's see what her reaction is going to be. Let's go. Maureen? How are you? <laughs> Didn't know I was here. How are you? You good? I'm all the, be I'm all the yeah. better for seeing you. Yeah, I How just said I'd come in and say hello, I'm only back. Show me you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're looking all right? No. You're looking good yourself, I think. Thank you very much. Must no. be looking for something when you're complimenting me. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the plan, Maureen? Are you still putting them to their paces and killing well, as, them? Or as you like see, the way you killed me? Well, you should be saying thank you more. Yeah. As you can see, the children are still dancing. Hail, floor. rain or snow all around the rain. floor and we have competitions coming up and we have shows coming up. I know Michael since before he was born, because his mother was a dancer, a very good champion dancer. She danced with Mrs. White of Ennis, whose class I luckily, for me, I inherited that. So Michael came into the dancing class as a very small boy, two or three in a go-kart. 
Having said that, he didn't pay any attention until he was about six, and then he paid a little. And since then, he has been paying very little. But having said that, he, was, he, he has a natural aptitude and he has good rhythm. So he wanted to dance, and that's the only requirement, really. Normally, it used to happen maybe three times per week. You'd have um, a Tuesday and Thursday class, and you'd have a Saturday morning class. But coming closer to the time of, of a competition, like the All-Ireland Championships or the World Championships, it would be just flat out all the time. You'd maybe have six rehearsals per week, each lasting three hours, four hours, depending what Maureen would, would decide, you know. I still think the most fundamental thing is that they enjoy it. But they must have a good ear for music. It's no use hopping around the floor and looking pretty if the music is only incidental to what your feet are doing. They must have a good ear for music. They must have good rhythm in the hard show dance. They must be with the music and with the rhythm. And as I say above all, they must enjoy it. And they must be able to take correction. Nobody likes telling them their faults. But if they want to be successful, they'll have to listen to their teachers. This is Zoe, and she's dancing with uh, Oro School for how long now? How long are you with the school? Probably about, she was about three, and you're now? Seven. Seven. So four years she's with Maureen. Do you like Maureen? Don't you? You do? Yeah. She's great, isn't she? Is she the best? Zoe is the best, and she's going to be a champion one day, I think. Um, so we're going to do a little dance together, aren't we? What are you going to do? Tap real steps? Are you going to teach me or am I going to teach you? Am I going to teach you? Okay, let's try it, yeah? Okay. Alright. So, so we already know there's loads of steps. We'll try this one. Okay. Hi and welcome. I'd like to show you some of Ireland's most famous landmarks and landscapes. At the moment we're in the ancient harbour of Kinvara, which is one of the places during famine times where people left to go to the New World, which is the story of Magic of the Dance. But at the moment it's just a beautiful harbour town. Misty clouds on heated ground Where no single teardrop falls. What impresses me most about Ireland is um, the landscape and the scenery and it's just fabulous because when you're away and you're in big towns and cities and big countries, it's just great to come back to you know your own home and your own place and where you're brought up like. I absolutely love Ireland. I think the saying there's no place like home, you know, is so true. You always know after tours, you know, major cities in the world, say Rio de Janeiro, you know, Sao Paulo, I mean, in Germany, in the major cities, and in London, in Australia, New Zealand, it's always like the drive back from the airport, you know, when you arrive in Shannon Airport and you're just driving home, you just see like the green fields and, you know, the blue skies, and it's always kind of a cold climate, you know, there's certain things that I just love about Ireland. As coffin ships await departure, tis you must leave. must leave and I must stay here. I must stay Hi, welcome to Tipperary. This is where I live in Six Alley Grove in Nina, so I'd like you to come in and meet my family. My family are very important to me. Um, I have a very close relationship with my family, you know. Um, 
there's a few years between, say, me and Cathy, but Cathy used to teach me an awful lot, okay? She's responsible for an awful lot of my success as a dancer. Um, she trained me when I didn't want to train. You know, there'd be Saturdays and everybody would be going swimming and Cathy would be like, no, in, have to practice. But as you can see, it paid off, you know? She was there for me. She was a really strong part of my life on that side. You know, she really, she did everything for me. She bought me my costumes and, you know, then I have my other sister, Sinead. I have, she's a great friend. She's like a best friend, you know? She's like friends that I have on the show or friends that I have when I went to school with. You know, she's, I could talk to her about anything. I could tell her anything. And I think my parents are just so outgoing, you know? They're not old fashioned in any way. We were very proud of her and delighted for her because she did it all on her own. She worked extremely hard. She's a very strong-minded person. If she wants to succeed in something, she will succeed in it. She will work and work hard at it to do it. And she, I'm very, very proud of her. I think she thoroughly deserves everything she achieved because she was such a hard worker and because she did it so much of it on her own. You know, with the help of her sister and that, but she didn't have much support behind her. She did everything herself, you know. When we did go see Orla, you know, I just thought, well, you know, it's just Orla and it's not going, you know. I, we were all struck when we saw her. We just didn't believe how really good she was. We didn't understand it to that extent that she was that good in the show. But we were overwhelmed now when we saw her. We thought she was absolutely fantastic. Your family is always important, but I suppose when when you're away a lot, especially like we are when you're touring all the time and you spend maybe six, eight, ten, twelve weeks away from home, that brings it into retrospect of how, how much uh, of an importance your, your family are. And my mother is very important to me, obviously, because she's the one that kept dragging me through dancing all my life and that's how I ended up doing this. So, yeah, family is always important. There was a class twice a week. I made sure he was there. He, after a few years, he came into Ennis to dancing and I made sure he got his dancing shoes and went up to the school to have him put him on a bus and get him into Ennis, get him on a bus back home and went over to meet him, to bring him over home. It's my culture, it's what I grew up with, it's what my mother paid money for me to learn and I learned music, I learned dancing, I learned the old form of dancing and every, every Irish person, or no matter what nationality you are, if you've got a culture, you've got a special, a special dance form that's just native to your own land and you get the chance to take that outside of your country and show it to other people and it's even better when other people see it and enjoy it. That's, that's, when, that's when the reward really comes and of course I, it feels great going out there and getting on a stage and dancing in front of 2,000 people and seeing them at the end of a show stand up and clap heartily and shout and scream and ask for more because there's, there's nothing else. What, what more could you want? Like? Right, here we are outside Lenan's pub, cousins of mine. Um, Gerald Lenan owns the bar and he's a second cousin, I think, or third cousin of mine. And his mother was Kitty Lenan, who was the great member of the Kiffinor Kelly Band, who won the All Ireland, three All Irelands in like 50 years. Um, but we're dying for a pint. Uh, yes! Get into yourself, yes. come on. Lads, how's it going? Marvellous. Come on. Right, this it's is not stage, actually, because we're dying for one and it's, it's, it's brilliant getting us here. Music, music's great, too, as well. You Let's come in. Lads. You got it, right. you're missing so much. It's the Irish people love music, they've grown up with it and they come to these traditional Irish pubs to listen to their music and um, they all join in and it's, it's really good. <laughs> Hey! 
um, I've been travelling for the last five years Irish dancing. So although I'm not Irish, I think that um, I've been taking Irish culture and heritage to lots of places of the world and people appreciate it. And yeah, you could, I think a messenger for, for Ireland is kind of a nice title, you know. <laughs> We do take our culture, our Irish dancing and our music to other parts of the globe. You know, we've taken it from just Germany, you know, all around Europe to Slovenia, Croatia, Brazil. And they're they get a chance to see our culture, you know, so we're taking our music, our song and our dance, something that's been very, very special to us for hundreds of years. We really hope that uh, that you're going to enjoy this video and enjoy the, the DVD and the extra features and all we've done and the fun we've had because we've certainly had fun making it. Um, so thanks a lot for everything. Thanks for watching and uh, buy the video. Load. Thank you. As you can see, we're in Stromberg for the next four days, rehearsing for our big show in Paris on the 4th of June in the Morgador Theatre. Um, we're all very excited about our rehearsals because we hope they'll go well. We're doing about 10 hours a day to make sure that everything is perfect for our video. Form and, and all these dance shows have that that basis, have that common denominator that it is Irish dancing. Um, Magic at the Dance has a different storyline completely. Uh, it's, it goes back to the famine times where we had a, um, a great famine in Ireland in 1845. Uh, so there's nothing contrived about our storyline. It's realistic. It's, it's Irish history. It, it happened. It's a love story depicting um, two people torn apart by this famine which is represented by me, um, a kind of a dark character. Uh, and the choreography itself, as I've said, is, is completely different. It's completely different to anything you've seen before. It's, it's, um, it's faster, maybe I shouldn't say that, but it's faster, it's more furious. It's, it's really, really, really energetic. <laughs> Shouldn't be it. As I said before, can you look forward for a minute? Look forward. I shouldn't be able to see Priscilla's face at all. I shouldn't be able to see Chelsea's. I should be only able to see. You know what I mean? Move in. 
that's what we're practicing today, you know, to make sure that's all perfect. It takes a while, but you do, you, you know. There's going to be chaos, like people don't know where they're going and they're bumping into each other, bashing, you know. Every, everybody is aware of their own little place to be in. Five, six, seven, and... Well, I've been dancing since I was three. My mom was a dancer, so um, she made me join. <laughs> mm. But I've um, been dancing since, and I can't remember not dancing, so. Yeah, it started out as a hobby, and it was something I always loved to do, you know, and I was always very committed to it, even though it's a fairly expensive hobby, like, and now you get paid for something that you love to do for as a career, like, it's great, that's why. So when I was younger, I always wanted to be a dancer, and this is exactly what I thought it'd be, and the people that I'd meet and things. Yeah. You know, so it's been good. Good adventure, I think. Never yeah. want it to end. <laughs> um, well, a lot of people in Ireland, when they're young, a lot of young kids, four, age four or five, all start off dancing. They go to dancing school, and they go through competitions. Uh, dancing in All-Ireland, dancing in World Championships, going abroad, travelling. Uh, so it started out as a hobby, and then when Riverdance came along in 94 and the whole Irish dancing scene became such a high draw in the market. When my chance came up to join a show, it was Magic of the Dance, and I took it. It's good fun. You can see a lot of the world, meet good people. Why not? This is Schindeldorf, Stromberg. It's where we live every so often to do rehearsals for the show. Up over there is the big hall where we do rehearsals. These are the houses. There's Suzanne Cleary. And that's my fork. My house is this one. And that's Lucas. Lucas, say hello to the camera. I'm Lucas. <laughs> We're on a break from rehearsals at the moment, so the World Cup is on, so we're watching the soccer. This is our house. Hey. <laughs> Aren't dancers supposed to have a healthy diet? This is very healthy. Very, very healthy. Sausage and mashers from home, can't beat it. So, um, do you cook a lot when you're all together? If we're here in a situation like this, we cook a lot, yeah. We have our meals laid on as well. But for lunchtime and breakfast, we cook. So, people normally take turns in cooking, you know? So, we all cook for each other. We do. Oh, the two the girls, yeah, times. never clean up. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> we're in hotels a lot of the time. So it's nice just to sit. They can yeah, to have it. a living room and watch TV and cook your own food and things. Because in hotels, you don't get a chance to do that. You have breakfast and you have catering. So you kind of go to your own room and you don't get to see the whole group. But as you can see, it's like a little village, a little town, yeah? Up and down, people, different people's houses, borrowing sugar and yeah. tea and things. It's, it's really good. <laughs> Some of the dancers here are world champions and, and uh, they, they have to work as a team. If you don't have a team and if they don't work as a team, you're wasting your time completely. This group was, was selected very well. We've got so many different characters, you know, really funny people and some quiet people, but everybody like just really gets on brilliantly, you know. We always like go out together, you know, if we have a night off, we'd all go for dinner and we go out afterwards and it's just really, it's like a family more so, you know, we call each other like brothers and sisters because we spend more time with each other than we do with our families. Yeah. 
American tap dancers of the of Magic of the Dance. I'm the, the soloist, the American leader of a gang. We are a gang, we're playing in New York. And we have the chance to show different faces to the show. We're gonna dance on electronic <laughs> tap dancing. We're gonna dance with the barrels. We're gonna drum a bit. And we'll have a block like Fred Astaire. So we bring different faces to the show. <laughs> are very very good because I got my two with them teeth pulled um, on Tuesday and so I have to be very careful and not jump too much because I could bleed again and I got stitches and I have to to be careful but it's getting better <laughs> Obvious for the public is the difference of styles in the body language. While the Irish used to be always very straight, we are moving, we are much more free and, and easy going. The second thing is what is very simple spoken, the Irish are always binair, they are straight. Or triplets, while normally we like, to, we like to do swing or to have different faces, different music styles. And historically I would say that the Irish were the first art form in the last century, 1800, they start to do their thing. Tap dancing in that way started 1920, that we had the soft shoes and the irons and other things. So the music was different. It was the era of swing. So this is the big difference. <laughs> It's figured out. Just figure it out. Could you uh, quickly just say what the problem is? With this? Um, two of, we're just missing two of our dancers. They're gone away, so we just have to try and slot them in. That's the only problem. Just trying to figure out the rotation of it. always room for improvement, always, no matter what, you know, no matter how good something looks in a rehearsal hall, you can always push that 5% more, always, and why not? <laughs> I'm going to need a few people. I'm going to stay on with a few. So, um, good stuff. Hello, we've just arrived in the Morgador Theatre in Paris. We're very looking forward to our first show, but before that, we have a lot of rehearsing to do.
the show we have, it's, it's a smaller scale show than Lord of the Dance or River Dance. It's more personal, we're closer to the audience. Um, it's, we played in the, Jerry we in the Jerry Weber Stadium in May on the 5th, and that was to 7,000 people. But it was the same size show that we have now. And we, also, we had screens, stage right and stage left, so the audience could see. But we lost the, the, the closeness that we had to the audience. So I think it's perfect for the video that we have that, you know, we're so close to the audience. We get more of a reaction. You know, they're not as far back and they're not as high up. You know, so we're, it, we're closer to them. I think it is a better place, better than a, a sports hall or an arena, just for the video, yeah. We're trying to set Michael's feet on fire. It has never been done in any other dance show, so it's a new element to make the show stronger that we want to do. Um, he wears a wire down the side of his leg with two igniters on his feet. The problem is that when he dances and he cuts or he lifts his leg, the connection breaks. So that's why the ignition doesn't light. And when he does some toe, sometimes if he moves too fast, because it dances very fast, it just goes out. regular tour day. Okay, we wake up at about nine o'clock some mornings and luggage has to be down at the bus because everyone has so much luggage at, by 9.30. So it takes a half an hour to load the bus. So luggage is at a, a half an hour before we leave. So then we'd leave at about 10 o'clock. We'd arrive to the next hotel on the next day at about two o'clock. So we have an hour and an hour and a half to check in there and just leave our bags and bring what we need for the theatre. Then we'd leave at about 3.30 or four o'clock to go to the venue and then 5.30, the band are on stage for a sound check. And then I work with the Irish dancers from six o'clock till quarter to seven. And then Sven, the tapper, he leads the tappers. He works from quarter to seven to half past seven. And then if there's a new number in the show or if Michael is doing a new choreography number, that's worked from, from half seven onwards, and then we just get ready for the show at eight o'clock. You just have to make sure that you look after yourself right, you know, get enough sleep, because as you say, it's very hectic. It's, um, you know, you're on the bus together in a small environment the whole time, you know. And it's just lucky that you get on so well with the group. You know, you have to be easygoing and, you know, outgoing also and, you know, learn to kind of mix well and you just have to look after yourself that you don't kind of get run down, you know, by not taking the time out to eat when you're, you know, meant to and sleep when you're meant to and things like that. But if you look after yourself, it's just like any other job, really. This is a uh, new set of trousers. And uh, wardrobes got their hands full at the moment. So, I've got a new job. How's it going, Pete? What are you doing here? Doing the same thing, cut my new trousers. Because <laughs> we're a bit busy, like Connor said, so here we go. I should have listened in home economics. <laughs> the first costume we have to wear is this green velvet dress. Um, but if um, you, you're in the uh, procession, you have to put the brown robe over the top. So you put this over the top. And as soon as you finish the procession, you take it off and you've got this green dress ready for the first dance, which is called the opening jigs. And then it's a quick change into the devil dress for the second dance. And then a quick change into the Kaylee costume. 
And then the quickest change for us is from the Kaylee costume back into the freeze dance costume. You've got about a minute to change for that one. It, I do find it easier to kind of dance in lighter costumes, you know, and then to go from a light costume into a heavy, you know, with sleeves and velvet, it's, it's quite hard. But you, you get used to, if you're dancing in them every night, it doesn't really make that much of a difference at the end of the day because you, you just become used to it. Under this is the costume that is for the next number. So basically, we do this first, which is on the stage, we come off. Very quickly, this comes off, we throw it off, throw it somewhere there, and then we get ready for the next number. We've got 30, Sorry, 30. This is my case. I have to get ready. Oh, this, this, is, this, oh. is, this is Sven as usual, putting yes. into everything. Hey, yeah, I'm so relaxed, I'm American, I'm so sorry. In the last hour, everyone just um, goes to physio, get a quick massage just from calf muscles, or if anybody has just a slight, a weak ankle, just from a long day rehearsal, just to tape it up to make sure nothing happens, just as a precaution. Then people just go to get makeup, get your makeup done, just do your hair. And then we try to be down stage, down side stage for 20 to 8, just to sit together, just to stretch, just to warm up and, you know, calm down a bit. It's quite nerve wracking right now because the audience are in and the video cameras are out there. So <laughs> trying to get everything right, makeup, make sure you're not sweating. <laughs> yeah, I've got new shoes on, so I'm scared of and kiss a fall. Yeah, that's the only thing. <laughs> As long as I stay on my feet, I'll be fine. Yeah. Just turn around, if I may. So, this is my microphone for the voice, for being the entertainer. But the best thing is my microphone <laughs> for my feet. This is my microphone in the foot. So this is from a German firm, company, and because they love me too much, they gave my microphone a name. It's called Esel. It's donkey. <laughs> uh, uh. I think they're ambassadors, you know, not alone Michael, but all the troop. I think that they're um, ambassadors for their country and for their parents and their family. You want to actually stand up and say, well, you know, this, this, is, my, this is my son on stage, you know. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a feeling you can't describe, really. You know, it's just, I think you feel that you, you really want to burst with pride. Have a wonderful time with magic of the dance. Mom, mom, I'm in Paris, Paris, no Paris. Can you imagine? Okay, thank you, that's enough. <laughs> Viva la France. Viva la France. The quickest change we have is one minute. So it's the girls are off after the Kaylee and they have to change their, sho their shoes and their costumes and their underwear. So everybody just helps them, you know, you, see, you know when they're coming. So I'm standing there, let's stand in there because we're not on that number. And they just run in and you just help them take off their costumes, hand them towels, bottles of water, and just shove everything away, up and gone. Okay. There's no really turning back now on what's done is done at this stage. I just know exactly.
actually what I'm doing. I'm so used to doing it. I could do it without thinking about it, you know, but I absolutely love being on stage. I don't, I don't really suffer from nerves. I do on a night like tonight because it's for the video, but normally I'm just like, if it's 1,000 people or if it's 10,000 people, you know, it doesn't make a difference. I just, I love being on the stage. <laughs> There's so much energy from everybody, you know. I'm not the only person on the stage, and I think everyone does their job, and it brings out your your work even better because, you know, you, you feel it from everybody and the audience as well, and it just happens. And I'm in my character, and I just do it, and I love it. Like, it just it just comes out when you hear the music and the buzz, and it's brilliant.
When the sun gives way to dark shadows, and the heavens blue are suppressed by a blood-red cape, the demons awaken. Mystical and wicked, mighty and of evil conviction.
Hi. Hi. This is my boat. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Wait a minute, I can't find it. Jesus. Get it out. <laughs> you like fish? Harry, they like fish. Oh, you're so small. You have to go back. <laughs> Sorry.
given only to emptiness, cold, and merciless. The famine, the hunger has taken its deadly toll. Save yourselves, every soul possible, to the new world.
safety and danger await. As we rise from the ocean, open to a new world, a land far from home. Yet, tis our future, a cradle of our children and theirs, giving in to our destiny in a country far off, venturing for our dreams to come true. Bonsoir, good evening, you speak English. What's your name? Andreas. Andreas, come on, let's move. Come on, Alain. I have the best looking man of Paris here. Okay. And you're my special one. Get up on your feet. Uh, you're not the president, huh? You look very nice. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, a simple question. Do you know me? Yes, no, maybe. Decide. Come on. Do you know us? Look at the boys. They call us Chippendales. Come on. Come on, join us. Monsieur le Président, come on. Come on. Oh la la. Imagine you're very sexy. Come on, move your pelvis. Do you know John Wayne? Uh, Monsieur? Oh, oh la la. Hey. Oh God. Michel. Oh, uh, uh, all right. And now, our special star, Alain. Come on, Alain. Get it off, get it off. Take it off. Take it off, babe. Okay. Alain, it was nice to meet you. Sit down. Thank you. Okay. Un, deux, trois, deux. Sit down. Uh, monsieur. Hey, Monsieur Michel, sur la stage, money is for me. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Stop, Michel, Michel, Mich Monsieur, Monsieur. We do some music, stay. Wow, together, and I need your help. Could you clap your hands one time? <clears throat> You speak English. Could you clap your hands? Could you clap your hands one time? <laughs> Un fois, huh? Alors. That's Paris. Okay. Okay. Concentration, Michel. I'm with you. Huh. No. Okay. Everybody. Let's get crazy tonight. Hop. Can you feel it? Okay. Boys, we can dance. Come on. Hop. Come on. Michel. That's it. That's a dance. It's easy. Sorry, it gets here. Boys. No, 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 no. Okay. Simple. Popo Town. Popo Town, huh? Popo Town. Popo Town, where? What, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing here? Okay. okay, how do you feel? Strong? Like a tiger? <sighs> huh? What? What?
Give them power, huh? <laughs> Boys, you're looking for energy. It, no, listen, it's, it's not here, it's here, the energy. Jesus. Two times. Bravo! Bravo! He didn't see it. Two times. I did it, he did it, you didn't, 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 huh? <laughs> Let's see. Could you turn around? <laughs> okay. And hop! Deux fois, deux fois, s'il vous plaît. Deux fois, la, les pieds, les pieds, les pieds! Merci beaucoup! Les aïeux boys! Au revoir, monsieur! Big hands for my friends! Oh, oh my goodness! My goodness! Oh, that was fun. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. No Hair. Join us and feel it come on. We try so. Come on, hop, one more time, feel it, dance it, come on. So that was fun. Hey boys, what do you want?
to the band. Da, 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 ba, 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 da. Da, 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 ba, 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 da. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, la, la. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, la, la. So. Hot boys. Thank you so much. Wow. Let's slow it down. Easy. Uh oh.
shot. Good, uh, come on. Watch your wings, come on. Secretive world, puzzling. You show me thousands of images, but where do I find my beloved? My soul is sad and full of desire, my dreams full of tenderness.
sense of creation. The creator and creation merge into one wholeness of joy. I keep on dancing and dancing until there's only the dance.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Evening. Welcome to New York. Welcome to the Stardust Club. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. With your kind permission, I would like to introduce our special guest of this evening. He is the world finest, the world first tap dancing chuckler. Please welcome Mr. Lucas Weiss. <laughs> Mr. Weiss. <clears throat> Mr. Weiss, you're on. Oh, he got it.
wonderful. Mr. Lucas Spice, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Wise.